will start. Archana ji, can you start? Yes, Rangada. Yes. The okay, last go ahead. Thus are made possible the final steps when the veil of nature is withdrawn and the seeker is face to face with the master of all existence and his activities are merged in the action of a supreme energy which is pure, true, perfect and blissful forever. Thus can he utterly renounce to the sup supramental Shakti his works as well as the fruits of his works and act only as the conscious instrument of the eternal worker. No longer giving the sanction, he will rather receive in his instruments and follow in her hands a divine mandate. No longer doing works, he will accept their execution through him by her unsleeping force. No longer willing the fulfillment of his own mental constructions, and the satisfaction of his own emotional desires, he will obey and participate in an omnipotent will that is also an omniscient knowledge and a mysterious, magical, and unfathomable love and a vast, bottomless sea of the eternal bliss of existence. Yeah. This is the last bit. So he has told us what when the, <clears throat> the first stage of the normal yoga, not only the integral yoga, but the normal yoga is that you have to climb to the self. That means you lose your identification with body, mind, life and go to the self. In that case, what happens? The ego disappears and your consciousness is in the self and it's a very happy situation. You are at peace. But maybe not necessarily the... <clears throat> you may not have the... Just one second. You may not have necessarily the uh, ananda. You may not have also power. You can get a touch of it, but not fully. That is the first step. Now, these all the yogas go to that level. Okay. Now, Srebno says, you are in peace, but the body, mind, life remains imperfect. And you, at that second level of the self, you don't have the power to do anything. Okay, but many people are very happy with that and they take it for granted. Now, Srivano says, you have got liberation of the soul. But what about liberation of the nature, your body, mind, life? So then now you have to go to even a higher level and you have to become an instrument of the divine. So that is the next one. So it is not enough to go to the self only. Okay, that's what he's saying. It's not enough to go only to the self. <laughs> you have to go even higher up. Just one second. Yeah, it is not enough to go a little bit. You have to go even higher up. And when you go even higher up, then you start opening to the divine consciousness and the slowly you realize that you are only a an instrument of the divine. But there also he has discussed in great detail that the instrumental ego can replace. Okay, So that also has to be got rid of by becoming really a, an instrument of the divine. So that goes to the next level. You have to get rid of the ego first by going to the level one. Then you have to get rid of the instrumental ego by going to level three. And at that time, your instrument, the body, mind, life also start becoming purer. And then you become ultimately you know, the, the nature also changes. Your body mind life also changes and you become truly an instrument of the divine. These are the three steps. That is the integral yoga. The normal yoga stop at the self. But Shirdha says you have to go even more higher up. That's what he's talking here, the final steps. Okay, The final steps is going up to the supermental. Okay? Thus are made possible the final steps when the veil of nature is withdrawn and the seeker is face to face with the master of all existence and his activities are merged in the action of a supreme energy, which is pure, true, perfect and blissful forever. Okay? You, you get that. Now, very interestingly, you are not doing anything. You are only letting the divine do everything through you. So, no longer, no longer, no longer, three times he has repeated, this is the last achievement of the 
integral yoga. So, thus can he utterly renounce to the supramental shakti his works. You are not doing anything more anymore. You are the first thing you think you are doing when you are at level one. Then you go to level two, you feel that, oh, yes, I'm not doing anything, but I'm the instrument. Instrumental ego can come in. Third level, you open yourself to the divine and the ego gets annihilated and then you become an, really an instrument of the divine in the interior yoga. You may be satisfied entirely at level one, having peace and calm and sense of liberation. But that's not enough. The liberation of the soul is the first step. Liberation of the nature is the second step. Liberation of nature means all the imperfections of the body mind life get cancelled. And then you are not doing anymore. So now we read those three sentences where he says, no longer, no longer, no longer. But before that, thus can he utterly renounce to the supramental shakti his works as well as the fruits of his works and act only as the conscious instrument of the eternal life. No longer giving the sanction. When you are at level one in the cell, you feel that you are the sanction giver. Okay. First of all, you are only the witness. Then you realize that you are the sanction giver and then you give the sanction. Now, at the third level, not even sanction because the sanction is coming from the divine. You are only a channel, an instrumental channel. Okay. No longer doing work, he will accept their execution through him by her unsleeping force. Okay? Nature's unsleeping force. No longer willing the fulfillment of his own mental constructions and the satisfaction of his own emotional desires, he will obey and participate in the omnipotent will. Now, note interestingly, not only obey, but participate. He will become part of the omnipotent will. Okay? And that time, the so-called <coughs> Individual will also can become the real uh, divine will, okay? omnipotent will. That is also an omnipotent knowledge and mysterious and a mysterious magical and unfathomable love. And a vast bottomless sea of the eternal bliss of existence. So that complete will. Gangada, Gangada, okay. yeah, tell me. So, in that last uh, sentence, we have also a tinge of separation, right? Otherwise, how do we feel it? No, I didn't exactly follow the question, uh, Pallavi. No, like we say, we are uh, the instrument is conscious instrument, but then also yes. there is a sense of separation, like not ego, but a sense of separation is there. No, no real separation. Um, oh, you are asking an interesting question. If you feel yourself to be the divine. Um, you feel you are the instrument of the divine, a conscious instrument of the divine. So, but there is, yeah. but you are not divine. <laughs> yeah, the gradation. So that is a question which I can't answer very well. Because remember also there is another thing. There is a, a condition where you are one with the divine and yet you can enjoy the, um, the relation with the divine. So what you are asking is a very interesting question. There can be a gradation between the two. There can be an absolute union. Then you are not the instrument anymore. Okay? But you are the instrument. You feel yourself to be one. And yet there is a a difference, okay? Now, yes. I, 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 all this I will explain very clearly I'll, uh, in the Life Divine in the triple status of the super mind, okay? And I'll just repeat that to you, then it will become clear, okay? So, the first is in the super mind, the first is the Unitarian consciousness. Think of the sea, which is absolutely silent and only the sea exists, okay? The world doesn't exist. Because the world will come into the picture when the sea starts moving. Then the world becomes the manifested world. So this is the first um, status of the supermind. Absolute calm oneness. Now if an individual, a human being, 
experiences that status, he will feel himself to be one with the divine. Okay. Now, the second status is this slowly the waves are beginning to form. But now they are not yet the waves, but only the swelling. Okay. The swelling. So the wave is becoming conscious that I am a wave, but I am very much a part of the sea. Okay. So this is a sad. If a individual experiences the second status of the supermind, which is very possible, even at lower levels, partly you can experience, you will feel that I am an individual, but I am very much a part of the sea. I am very much a part of the divine, and yet I am an individual. Okay. In the Gita, it is Amsha Sanatana. You are a portion of the divine. So that is there. You feel yourself to be an instrument, and yet you are one with the divine. Then the third status is that the wave starts becoming conscious more of itself than the sea. Yes, I know I am the sea, but I am more conscious of my own individuality. In other words, there are three gradations. So, Pallavi, your question is this. This is the answer, that there are gradations. There can be an absolute oneness with the divine, then the question of instrument doesn't arise. In the second one, you are an instrument, but a minor instrument. Okay, The instrumentation is minor. Okay, The main thing is the you are um, uh, you are part of the sea, okay? And the third one is you are more an individual than you are more an instrument, but still I am part of the divine. <laughs> so that answers your question. So Shurvinda's hmm. integral yoga means the third one. I mean, we have to reach that standard. Yes, you have to reach that standard. <laughs> and depends yeah. on the... Yeah. But it also depends on the individual soul. Na? The Pallavi, sometimes... The Advaitin is very satisfied to become one with the divine. But Sremdo wants also the consciousness of the physical world to remain because you have to become an instrument of the divine. So it is possible to do that. You can become the divine and yet be an instrument. Logically, it seems impossible. Your question was based on logic. But in the spiritual world, you can go beyond logic. You can be an instrument and yet you can also be part of the divine. You can be the divine and yet be an instrument. That is the Vishishta Advaita philosophy. Na? First of all, there is the Shankaran philosophy which says that you, this individual soul is absolutely essentially the divine. Okay, That's the Advaita philosophy, Vedanta. But there is a Vishishta Advaita, special Advaita, where you can become one with the divine and yet you can have a relation with the divine. It's possible. And the third theory is that you can enjoy relation with the divine. You can be an instrument and you can enjoy relation, but you cannot become the divine. That's the Madhvacharya and Nimbarka and others. So all these experiences are possible. Okay. It's a very interesting uh, question which led me to the answer from the life divine. Okay. Rangada, I think yeah. you can, you, when you can change, uh, change willingly, that you become once that when it is required and once this when it is required. Yes, yes, of course. But uh, you can change, yeah, that's right, because your will has become one with the divine. And that will, it has to be a divine will. So that will can never be wrong. So whatever you are willing, okay, if it is there, now this is an interesting question because what you raised... It's not okay, you are willing, no. It is divine uh -huh. willing. That is not yeah. you are willing. It is divine willing. That's right. That's Wendy, that's right. In all the three conditions, it is like that. Okay. It is like that. It's Tata, very interesting. Tata, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, one, one, one or two lines from a man in the universe, in life divine. Sirvinda has told in the page number 51, in the PDF I am having, yet, yet is he called upon to preserve even when he most extends himself in universality of consciousness, a mysterious transcendent something of which his sense of personality gives him an obscure and egoistic representation. Otherwise, he shall miss his goal. The problem set to him has not yet not been solved. The divine work for which he accepted birth has not been done. 
So, are you asking a question or are you just saying something? No, no, just, just I have read in this context, Dada. I just yes. uh, from the life divine that he has to upkeep that mysterious transcendent something, otherwise he will miss miss his goal <laughs> because he has taken birth only what you have just told now that uh, he has to exceed himself and. Uh, uh, and he has to reach the supramental level and uh, uh, he has to live the life uh, uh, that uh, die, uh, multiple uh, mul- life in multiplicity but in unity. Yes. That is mysterious because it is logically not possible but it is spiritually possible. That's the whole point. That's why mysteriously. <laughs> okay. So. All right. We can go now to the next chapter. Very interesting. The next chapter, just one second. The next chapter is the three modes of nature. This is the, from the Gita, where the three modes of nature are Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. Na? So, Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. These are the three modes of nature. Because he has described, to, uh, he has told us very clearly that in the lower level one, the modes of nature, Sattva, Rajas, Tamas are the uh, things that bind the human soul at the, the in the world. So now he has told us very clearly that now you are free. The three modes of nature and sattva are just ours, but they also have to be transformed. They have to be also liberated. And I'm just telling you the dint of this of what he's going to say here. These sattva, rajas, and tamas are the three modes of physical body, mind, life. And they bind you down. The soul is absolutely subject to body, mind, life. But when you go to the higher level, what he has described in the previous annihilation of the ego and the liberation and nature, annihilation of ego and liberation of nature, then what happens is that the tamas in the body gets replaced by its true element, which is the peace. The peace is the fully conscious and awakened non-movement. Okay? And the tamas is the unawakened peace in the physical, which is the reluctance to change. Okay? But there, at the highest level, it is not reluctance to change, but it is peace which is dynamic. Okay? It is not, it is sleeping, it is not sleeping. But the tamas is sleeping. Peace and tamas are same thing, Positive and negative. The peace is the negative and the tamas is the negative. The peace is the positive. So peace, tamas becomes peace. Then rajas. Rajas is the principle of action, mode, energy, power, movement, desire, attachments. So these become, at a higher level, it becomes pure divine energy. Pure divine energy without the imperfections. And your Mind is a mixture of ignorance and knowledge. It's a mixture of ignorance and knowledge. But then, at the highest level, it becomes only knowledge. So this is the transformation of the three modes of nature. So we can start reading now the, to transcend the natural action of the lower planets. So, some, one of you has to read. Um, well, we can read. Tuesday is Pallavi's day. <laughs> Pallavi, you have the text? Maybe she is uh, not there te- temporarily. So, I have the text. Oh, yeah, okay. Go ahead, read. Who is reading? Pallavi is supposed to read, yes. Okay, okay, I'll read. To transcend the natural action of the lower prakriti is indispensable to the soul if it is to be free in itself and free in its works. Harmonious subjection to this actual universal nature, a condition of good and perfect work for the natural instruments is not an ideal for the soul, which should rather be subject to God and his shakti but master of his own nature. As agent or as channel of the supreme will, it must determine by its vision and sanction 
or refusal, the use that shall be made of the storage of energy, the conditions of environment, the rhythm of combined movement, which are provided by Prakriti for the labor of the natural instruments, mind, life, and body. But this inferior nature can only be mastered if she is surmounted and used from above. And this can only be done by transcendence of her forces, qualities, and modes of action. Otherwise, we are subject to her conditions and helplessly dominated by her, not free in the spirit. Sorry, I got my book. Just one minute. Yeah. Oh, good morning. No, it's okay. I'm in the, I'm in the class now. <laughs> uh, what is the time? It's 8.21. I've got 20 minutes more. <laughs> because Skype is not working. The sound is not working. That's why I'm on my phone and it's, I'm having the class. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have to just one second. Just one minute, huh? I'm getting the text. I have to also get used to my tablet. I need your help for that. I'll tell you after. Yeah. So, Pallavi, you read the first one. Yes, Rangadhar. I'm rereading it and we'll see if it is a, it's clear. Right? To transcend the natural action of the lower prakriti is indispensable to the soul if it is to be free in itself and free in its works. This is the integral yoga. To transcend the soul, to transcend the lower nature is enough for the normal uh, yoga. Okay, that's enough. They don't bother about the body mind life because in any case it's going to disappear in a very short time. Okay, short time relatively. Okay, so they don't mind. The soul is free and it can do what it wants. If the soul has a choice, it can come down into the physical world, it can remain in the subtle world, or it can dissolve itself into the infinite vastness. It can do any of these things, and the, each individual soul decides to do that according to their nature. So but in the integral yoga, you have to also free your body-mind life. The liberation of the body-mind life it has become pure and an instrument of the divine because you are not running away from the world. You are in the world, but if your body-mind life is imperfect, you can never be an instrument of the divine. Another thing, you are always an instrument of the divine, but you are distorting the divine will when you are in an imperfect condition. That's a condition of all human beings. We are imperfect and therefore the divine is working through us in spite of all our obstacles to him, but he is still working. So it's very, very imperfect. But Shrimna wants your body, mind, life also to become perfect and then you can become an instrument of the divine. So that's why, note that last bit. If it is to be free in itself, that's the aim of all yogas, but free in its works. That's the nature also must be liberated, right? Harmonious subjection to this actual universal nature, a condition of good and perfect work for the natural instruments. Natural instruments, nature, the word natural is not the normal uh, adjective. Of nature, what he means. That means the natural instruments are your body, mind, life is not an ideal for the soul, which should rather be subject to God and his Shakti, but master of its own nature. The ideal in the yoga of others, other yogas, Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, is to get liberation of the soul. That's enough. But this is not enough for Sri 
in the integral yoga. That's what he's saying. No? Harmonious subjection to the actual universal nature. Now, that's one thing. We, we are also subject to nature, but not harmoniously at all. We are all mostly fighting against the universe. But in the self, you become harmonious. You are not fighting against the universe anymore. You are fighting with the universe. You are not even fighting in level one. Okay. So it is harmonious. Each word is so important, you can see. Harmonious subjection to the actual universal nature is level two. Okay. Spiritual liberation. A condition of good and perfect work for the natural instruments is not an ideal for the soul in the integral yoga, which should rather be subject to God, not nature, and his Shakti, but master of its own nature. Okay, very clear. As agent or as channel of the supreme will, it must determine by its vision and sanction or refusal the use that shall be made of the storage of energy, conditions of environment, rhythm of combined movement, which are provided by Prakriti for the labor of the natural instruments. Again, natural instruments, body, mind, life. Okay. In fact, Sri is very clearly saying that, mind, life, body. But this inferior nature, which is untransformed, can only be mastered if she is surmounted and used from above. So your consciousness has to go up, first of all, to the self, then to the supramental self, and from there you have the power to change your body, mind, life. Not When you are at level two of the self, you don't have the power. To some extent, you have the power because you become the Anumanta. You become the Anumanta and the uh, Bhokta and Bharta. So a little bit of power is there, but not totally. Okay? Body will not change. You can change your mind and you can change your vital, but not your body. The body can be changed only with the rise to the supramental level. And this can be done only by transcendent our forces, qualities and modes of action. Otherwise, we are subject to her conditions and helplessly dominated by her, not free in the spirit. This is the, what's in the, in the first panel. Now, what's the time? We still have some time. We can read the second one. We'll stop a little early today. Okay, because <laughs> I need to get that Skype going properly. So we'll stop today after the second paragraph that we'll read. So who will read now? Would you uh, like me to read? Yes, Yasmin, please do that. The idea of the three the essential... The idea of the three essential modes of nature is a creation of the ancient Indian thinkers and its truth is not at once obvious because it is the result of long psychological experiment and profound internal experience. Therefore, without a long inner experience, without intimate self-observation and intuitive perception of the nature forces, it is difficult to grasp accurately or firmly utilize. Still, certain broad indications may help the speaker on the way of works to understand, analyze and control by his assent or refusal the combinations of his own nature. <laughs> These modes are termed in the Indian books, qualities, gunas, and are given the names Sattva Rajas Tamas. Sattva is the force of equilibrium and translate, translates in quality as good and harmony, and happiness and light. Rajas is the force of kinesis, kinesis, and translates as quality, in quality, as struggle and effort, passion and action. Tamas is the force of unconscious and inertia, and translates in quality, <coughs> as obscurity and incapacity and inaction ordinarily used for the psychological self-analysis, these distinctions are valid also in physical nature. Each, each thing and every existence in the lower prakriti contains them and its process and dynamic form are the result of the interaction of these quantitative parts. 
So <clears throat> we'll do one thing. It's a very interesting thing that Sattva Raja Samas are not only the individual, it's there in universal nature. And Gita has got a very interesting, it gives you all the action of the Sattva Raja Samas in everything, in your will, in even in food, in animals. Okay, it's very interesting. So it will be a long discussion. So today, I'm sorry, but we're going to stop here today and we'll take this up next time because it's a very interesting discussion how it is there in universal nature. Okay, It's a very interesting uh, subject. So we'll stop here today. You will please excuse me because 10 minutes I'm stopping because of certain circumstances. Okay, so we had 10 minutes, you could have discussed it, but 10 minutes won't be enough to discuss the whole para. Okay, so... We'll make a note. Sunki? Okay. Sunki, make, make a short please. Yes, I will make a note. Yeah, we'll redo this para. Okay. Mm, yes. Yes. Good everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.